Eda Ivarsdotyr, nech sa páči, poprosím, keby mohla prísť. A ja budem po slovensky rozprávať je hlavnou architektou mesta Reykjavík, čiže máme po hlavnom architektovi aj hlavnú architektu. A má neuveriteľne široké skúsenosti z oblasti módy, priemyselného dizajnu, plánovania, krajinárstva, architektúry, výtvarného umenia, ktoré sa premietajú do profesie jej ako mestskej plánovačky. Vyštudovala Sustainable Urban Design na School of Architecture v Švédsku na London University. A to, čo je zaujímavé a čo môže priniesť ako novú vrstvu pozerania na rozvoj mesta, je, že vníma mesto ako živý organizmus, prepájanie každodenného života s prírodou v meste je dôležité, ale aj dizajn mesta, ktorý umožňuje sociálnu interakciu a vytvára príjemné mesta ľudskej mierky. So, please, go on. Hear me. Last speaker of the day. Talk about pressure. Um, so, what can I tell to people that are, you know, so experienced in urban design when we come from a country that has almost no experience in urban places or outside places? Uh, but I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about our situation up in north, in Reykjavik. Um, drop this here. So, it's this one. Um, this is our country, Iceland. It's an island, uh, and in the whole country, we only have 317,000 people. Uh, whenever I visit the mainland, I feel extreme uh, envy of the mainland. You have all of the nice weather, you have the good climate, you have all of these awesome outdoor spaces, and you have a lot of people to use them. Uh, this is something that we don't have in Iceland, uh, and we don't have the weather to even like make these places because we have three months of summer, and then we have nine months of winter. And during these three months, we have to uh, construct all of our places, uh, and it's really hard when we lose the projects into winter. Um, I've been the head designer for uh, our, uh, the head of the urban design department for the past five years. So I'm going to tell you a little bit our, about my five favorite projects. Uh, all of these projects are, 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 are uh, evolve a lot of people. Uh, this is our main focus. People make the city and we make projects for people. So that is uh, always the focus. Um, and what we have in our cities are the competition for space. Where can we find space for all of our people? Uh, and like you can see, on a, this is the same street in Reykjavik when they were putting new asphalt and the, all of the cars were gone. I mean, imagine if we had all of the space for trees, for playgrounds, for anything else, but we are always competing with a car. Uh, the first project I'm going to tell you about is Odin's Torque. This is one of the first projects that I had uh, during my work in Reykjavik. Uh, and also pretty close to my heart because I was in also involved in the architectural team that designed it. Um, I am called the car parking killer because that is because we don't have a lot of existing urban spaces. So we are removing a lot of parking spaces. Uh, so, all of the driving people, they fear me when I arrive and like, remove it. Uh, so, this is, was a parking lot uh, and we decided to make a little square. Uh, this square has a lot of seating places. It's in three levels. Uh, there's a little play playground in the corner. Uh, it is actually within a neighborhood that doesn't really have that much service. There's a hotel next to it and uh, there's a little bar that wasn't there when we opened the square. Uh, and then it's mo mo mostly it is uh, residential. Uh, this is how we envisioned it. And when we were doing this rendering, we were like, yeah, but it's never going to be like that. Nobody's going to come and sit there. Like, and we're too putting too many seating places. But I mean, it's OK. It looks great. It, it serves the purpose of you know, showing what can be done. Uh, but we were wrong. What the reality was that uh, during a good day, and this is not even a holiday, there were so many people sitting there that we even were amazed because on the rendering we were like, no, no, remove people. It's not, it's not realistic. Take it away. But this is what happened. 
We even had to, this is the most seating places in Reykjavik, most outdoor seating places, except for maybe the sports halls. Um, and we had to bring in extra seating. So if you build it, they will come. And this is another day there. And that's, this is even during fall. You can see there are no leaves on the trees, so it's not even that warm. Uh, the second project is Trikogata. This is an ongoing project. It involves a whole street. Uh, it is connected to our old city center, but there was a recent development where we are extending the city center towards the harbor. Uh, this was a long-term project. It's still ongoing. We are finalizing the third step of the project now. Um, and I will start to talk about this little square here, which is the, what we call the hot dog square. Uh, it's horribly located. It's not really nice. It is uh, facing north, so it's not really that sunny. It has a parking lot. And then there was this hot dog stand. And that hot dog stand caused all of the stir because, I mean, the, there's not a lot of history as well in the city, but this one had history. This, hot, uh, this terrible little hot dog stand had a history since 1940. It's the oldest restaurant in Reykjavik. And when people were standing there, we were trying to fix, we had to fix all of the piping underneath. Uh, we were digging holes and we, then we had to like, call them in and say, we need to move the stand. The hot dog stand needs to be moved 15 meters. Everything went wild. People thought we were removing it forever, and, and, but we moved it 15 meters. And this is when we can see them lifting it up. It's so popular, there's always a line. Uh, Bill Clinton ate there and Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so, you need to go if you come to Reykjavik. Uh, but we ended up with a really nice little square. Um, and then we had to fight. Uh, we had the idea that it would be nice to put a little sign on the square that said hot dog in Icelandic, because we say it in two different ways, and it's always an argument. So when you're standing in the light, it's like, do you say pulsa or pilsa? So we put like the little sign with both sides. But this was an argument with the politicians because they thought it was um, kind of low grade. We were like grading down the square. What if the hot dog stand would leave? But then, you know, we had to say like, how do we create ident identity? And it's so important in all of the places to have identity and some sort of story. Uh, because we don't have the, like the big tradition of the squares. We need to create it. Uh, so. In every square, we try to find something that is local, something that creates this identity. And that was this little, of course, the hot dog stand, but then the little uh, sign. We ended up getting the sign. And it is really, it's been very well received and uh, people like it. And even if, you know, it was, the square was supposed to be called something else, but everybody calls it hot dog square because that's what it is. Um, then there was a second phase of the project, and this was supposed to be an entrance to a car park. Uh, then when we started to dig, we found this great archaeological find. We knew it was there, because it is a part of the history. It's an old uh, harbor, and it's the first one made out of stone in Reykjavik, so it had a very valuable history for the city as a port city. Uh, however, we did not know how well it was preserved. So we, need, we needed to think really, really fast. And this happened all over during like, it was two weeks. Uh, and when we made the suggestion, this is what it looked like in the old days. So it was like a pier going out into the ocean. But in order to preserve it, uh, we talked to archaeologi archaeologists and they said, either you just cover it and we document it and we know it's there, or we make it visible and we destroy the entrance to the car park. So I was like, yes. Let's do it. Everything to destroy car infrastructure. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but I mean, we need to do it in order to get people. It, we need to make um, cycling and um, public transportation more uh, pleasurable than driving the car in the city center. It's so unnecessary. Uh, so we did. We thought really fast, and uh, we ended up with a design that is actually much nicer than what we had planned before. Uh, and we managed to do this. There's a little light installation that illustrates the, the boats by the harbor. Uh, it's always sunny, it's always nice. 
Uh, and this is south facing, so we get the sun. And it also goes a little bit down into the ground, so we also get shelter from the wind. So it's, uh, I think I'm really happy with how we resolved it and how it turned out. Um, and this is what it looks from the street side and the new development there. Uh, then the third part that we are in the process of making right now. Uh, this is what it looked like. It was a car park. Um, and this big, big mural on this side of the building. And the mural was put on the building to show people, because it was a huge building at the edge of the water, and then we were taking away the, it's a 60s building, we were taking away the view of the harbor. So we had this Icelandic uh, it's a, a mural artist that's a woman, and it has been there, and nobody has really noticed it, because they're always just looking for their parking space, and there was almost no room for pedestrians. So this is what we are doing now. Uh, we are building the largest bench in Reykjavik that will go all, the, all along the art piece. Um, and it's going to turn out great, I think. So that's in the process now. Uh, then there's another happy accident. Uh, there was a hotel being built. Uh, we were taking away five parking spaces in front of the hotel because they requested it. So we always say yes, just yes, let's do it, remove them and do something else. Also, a square that is not really nice because it also is north facing and facing the wind and the, and the water. Um, not very sunny. And we had like, okay, we are, you know, quickly drawing up a sketch. And then there was something missing. And it's like, yeah, there is no connection here to nothing. This is not, you know, there's no connection to the history. It's, it's almost like a parking or like a car infrastructure. Uh, then I went fishing by the water in the ocean right next to it uh, with my son and we found this circle and I remember the circle from you know when I was a kid so I called up the and he started playing in it and I was like yeah well, it's really nice it is you know something you can play in it's an object it, it relates to the sea it's something that they put around the propeller of the ship so I called them up and I asked them like oh we're doing a little square can I have the, can I buy the circle? And they're like, yeah, keep it. Just take it. So we put it on the square. This was the sketch that I presented to the politi politicians. And you can see the square is already being built while we get this idea. Uh, they said yes. And it ended up being one of the most photographed places in, in Reykjavik. So it is also, it works that you look to, through it to the harbor to the shipbuilders that drag up the ships every day. So it is like a photo moment uh, that makes the square something. And during the night, it casts a shadow on the square. So it's always like a visual object that really grabs attention, but has a local history to it. Um, then it's a, a project that I'm not gonna tell you that much about because we're in the starting phase of it. Uh, we just presented, uh, it's like a talk, this is an old picture where we had this stream going ar along the street. Um, and then this horrible, horrible square that is, you know, one of the first ones in Reykjavik, but it never used, no seating places, always just a way to get through. Um, and this is what um, the winner of the competition that we had, it's Karens and Brands in Sprint Studio. And we are in the process of, you know, starting this design. So I'm really excited about, you know, moving forward with this proposal. Um, then another one, uh, we have, you see the yellow street over there, it's um, the pedestrian street, or the, the street we tried to make pedestrian. It's not going perfectly, but still we're getting there, so I'm not gonna go into that little matter. Um, but this is the other part of the city um, where we have Hlemmur, which is a food court at the moment. It was a bus station. It was the entrance to the city. Uh, it was the first bar, a legal bar, so you would, you know, get with your horses to this place, the horses would get something to drink, and the people would get something to drink, something illegal. But now, when you drink there, it's totally legal. And, <laughs> and it's also the birthplace of punk in Reykjavik, uh, and it's a very, like, car-oriented uh, development that is around it today. You can only see its parking spaces. It's the, it was the central bus station as well. It will also serve a little bit as bus station, but it's still inside of the whole building is still a food court. Um, and this is what we see it 
being in the future, about five years' time. We're starting uh, the um, construction this year, uh, and we're constructing the streets around it, but also because we are installing this new PRT, it is all hanging on that project, and it will probably take around five years to complete. It's huge. And this is what we see it, you know, in the future. Um, then another very, you know, hard project to discuss, or project or hard development. Um, Reykjavik we could intensify in quite a lot. And I feel like sometimes uh, during that densification, we are losing identity. We are losing what makes us, us. Uh, so this is, you know, the old city center of Reykjavik. It is quite dense, it's lower rise buildings, but it has character. And then we are what we are building today. Um, and like uh, Baut mentioned in his uh, lecture, uh, we shouldn't like implement or we shouldn't uh, copy ideas. And I feel like in many ways we have you know, tried too much to copy what we have seen worked elsewhere. Um, this is an older development that everybody likes in Reykjavik. Um, it is it, one of the most dense uh, like, plot of land. Uh, before we started like densify er elsewhere, so this was the like ideal size, um, and I mean we're taking the box that uh, Copenhagen does with these blocks. We are moving from large scale to small scale. We have uh, going from open space to enclosure, from stacking to layering, um, and we do that as well in these new developments. We're also you know following these three principles. And we're going, you know, we're joining up instead of standalone. We are multifunctional instead of non-multifunctional. And there's con we're concentrated and walkable. But is it likable? Is it something, we are missing something. And we're missing something from the streets. And I think, you know, one of the biggest issues is that in the older development, we didn't have uh, underground parking. So how do we create livable streets if we have underground parking? I think it's impossible. We can't tell shop owners that their shop in the residential neighborhood will work if there are no people walking on the street. And if you drive into your house, there's no way you're gonna walk on the corner. You can do it maybe during the weekend. You're like, okay, let's check out the bakery. But you're not gonna do it in your everyday life. So we need to get people onto the street instead of into their houses. So yeah, um, so what we've been pushing for um, in the new, new developments is that our department, the Department of Urban Design, is more involved in the planning from the beginning. So we're trying to make these design guidelines, trying to influence the architecture as well as the street. It's going not fantastically, but <laughs> I mean, I'm optimistic, so probably it will work in the future, and then we, you know, do the, we try to do like a landscape character of the neighborhood to try to implement something, some local character into the neighborhood from the get-go. Then we're not coming in after the development has been built and then designing the streets. Um, so for example, here we are, you know, categorizing streets into different layers, um, and then we try to create something you know, something more livable, something playful, something fun. Um, and we, you know, try to see the width of the street, how much things can we can put in them. Uh, like, can we put in trees? What if we, like, align the street a little bit to the side? Uh, then we can put some playful elements on the side and more vegetation. Um, and then we have a cy cycling paths and walking paths. And we end up with a street like this. Uh, we have a 11 meter white street. What can we put in there? Uh, there's a path for the cars. We narrow the street. Uh, make like crossings for people that, you know, cross like all over the place. Um, put in trees and playful things. And we end up with this kind of a neighborhood street. Um, and another one. So it is like this is the way that we're trying to get something done uh, trying to implement some ideas, then it is, you know, what follows. These are all just on the drawing table still. So, I mean, it depends, you know, what will they do in the future? And always, like, we need to embrace these, like, happy accidents, like in the previous projects, when we find something and be, you know, 
be courageous enough to do it along the way as, as well. I mean, what we plan is always just lines on paper until it's there. So it is changeable. You can change a line. It is possible. Um, and always about people. Um, I had like three like final, you know, the points that I had, the big lesson that I've learned and I, I would like to share um, is that we need to think about the people first, always. Uh, we are, you know, however, we are spending their money. It's the taxpayers' money, so we better make it good. We need to make the best public spaces for them. Um, also, uh, don't be discouraged. We always get, you know, people get mad. They get, you know, angry. We're, you know, we're changing behaviors. It's always hard. But then, you know, I think about two years ago, and COVID came, I think we're pretty good at changing our behavior. It can't be done. I mean, it was in, unthinkable to have masks. All of us did it. So we can't, you know, we need to be courageous. We need to do, just do it. Um, and also, um, grab every opportunity. If you see an opportunity to change, and if you see if somebody hands over an opportunity, like, okay, we need to, uh, if somebody asks for a parklet, for example, we need to be, think quick and grab the opportunity. Yeah. Did I manage to do this in 15 minutes, like promised? <laughs> Thank you. 77 slides. Premyšľajte, prosím vás, nad otázkami. Hey. Uh, I'm going to continue in English, in English. just okay. a reflection. So now I really understand uh, that your experience with design and arts and so on is very quite important. And I really, I promise that you will bring another layer of thinking and viewing, reflecting on public spaces and you did it. So thank you very much. I'm just wondering that uh, it reminds me of an urban wilderness and uh, like first pioneers were reclaiming part by part, square by square, piece by piece of this urban space to new public spaces. So what was most difficult for you? I think the most difficult are the projects that I didn't mention. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Like the, uh, I would exactly, if I explain yes. a little bit. Um, Please do mention something. It is, I mean, we have, you know, we are pedestrianizing a street and it has taken, what, 10 years? Um, and we did it during the summer and then we did it again next summer and then it's like extending the time and we have very angry stakeholders, uh, we have angry car owners, we have a lot of angry people, uh, but you know, they are allowed and uh, we have now, you know, permanently, per you know, pedestrianized a part of the street. But then we have this window of opportunity to uh, remake the street and it's only the three months and the three months are the best months for business. So that puts us in a double, you know, trouble. Uh, because, you know, we don't want to tear up the street, you know, in front of the shop or the restaurant while it's the biggest business. But then we don't want to lose the project into frost. Um, but, I mean, and also it is about, you know, all of these pipes underneath the streets. Are you kidding me? Oh, I never expected that. Because so all of the projects, they involve, you know, all of this infrastructure that you can't even see. But that's also a part of a city. So, you know, everything takes a little bit longer than we expected. So, thank you very much. And we will ask her for some more questions. <laughs> Takže, ak sú nejaké otázky, prosím, s vyhnutím ruky, ukážte, že sa chcete niečo opýtať alebo len zreflektovať, čo vás zaujalo, čo chcete špeciálne oceniť. A teraz neviem, či tam sa niekto hlási, alebo on tak gestikuluje. As, asi len gestikuluje. Nech sa páči, Petra. Hi, thank you for a really inspirational talk. Um, I wanted to ask you about the quick wins versus the, the long-term strategic mm -hmm. projects and mm -hmm. how do you balance those? Because I presume a lot of the projects, some of the projects you showed us 
seems like they were the quick wins and then mm -hmm. you get uh, positive feedback and you can see that people mm -hmm. use the space and, and it's it's really amazing. But then there's the more challenging ones which are very long term mm -hmm. and where you've got lots of um, difficult infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, do you, how do you keep the momentum uh, in both and how do you then, um, how does it work with the political cycle and with the political leadership of the city, which was also my, my question uh, to the previous speaker, uh, which I didn't ask yet, mm -hmm. but you know, it seems that uh, in, in Ternava, for instance, you know, there, there's an alignment between the political leadership mm -hmm. and uh, the, the design vision or the, the sort of planning and master planning vision of, of the city. So how important is that in case of Reykjavik? And yeah. if you can talk about that. For the quick quid, um, I think, you know, the projects that I presented here, like the little squares, most of them have been like test grounds for some years before. So we have this project called like uh, a square in waiting, where we you know put like the not temporary installations but something else. So we move it only during the summertime. So we you know we do test the projects before we go to the bigger you know development. Um, so we know a little bit you know where the land lies. If everybody hates it, we're not going to do it. So that's also you know a way of working and you know implementing the new squares uh, regarding the politics. Uh, we had the election last weekend, uh, and we probably will get some new, you know, people that will control the city. Um, however, I think you know, it is our duty as the professional because you know the politicians they are just you know people from the street. They have interest in the city, but maybe they don't really know you know what it what it takes, um, or they do. I mean, it is you know, it's a question of you know, yeah that we need to, you know, explain in a good way what we are doing and why we are doing it. And I think then it doesn't really matter where you lie in politics, it, you know, it matters what kind of a person you are. I mean, do you want a good city or do you want a car city? Or is a car city a good city? Some people say, think so, but I mean, you know, we here, I think everybody here agrees that, you know, that is not the way of the future. So I think, you know, if we have like decent people being, you know, mayors and politicians, I think we will, you know, always go the same path. And also, I mean, we have in the municipal plan, there are goals and there are, you know, rules and regulations that have been put in place that is really hard to change. And I think we are lucky in that respect in Reykjavik that we are in the municipal plan, it is addressed that we are creating a city for people. So that is, you know, the backup that we always have in our work. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nieka ďalšia otázka alebo podnet? Ak nie, ak dobre vidím, tak zatiaľ sa nikto nehlási. Ja by som poprosila. Thank you very much once more, Adam. Yes, thank you. Oh, it was really great.